What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So, I've been excited and been wanting to check this video out since it hit my sub box. Um, but there was other videos that I had to check out beforehand. But I knew I was going to take time to check this video out. Daniel Bryan's first and last WWE matches, bell to bell. I've been looking forward to this video since it dropped. Uh, and... And I'm looking forward to just going through all the matches, man. And it, this is Daniel Bryan's one of my, you know, one of my favorite wrestlers, especially in the the new era of wrestling that we're in. The whole yes movement was something that I was so glad I was able to witness when it started cultivating. And the fact that he had one of the best wrestling runs in the company that we had seen in quite some time. It was it was just it was cool to be a part of that. It was cool to see, you know, how the people, literally the people, got behind him so much that WWE had no other choice but to push him in. Of course, the whole CM Punk situation. So we gotta check this out. Make sure you subscribe to Tap Out Corner. I already am. I don't even know why I don't have post notifications on. Oh, it is on. There we go. There. Yeah, I, I had to I had to make sure to post notifications. We're on. Um, make sure you subscribe to Tap Out Corner. They make great videos, great content. And uh, let's check this out, man. This is going to be a nice, long video, and I'm looking forward to this. Let's do the damn thing. On May 22nd, 1981, a future WWE World Champion was born. Mm -hmm. Brian Lloyd Danielson grew up in Aberdeen, Washington, with a mother who was a therapist and a father who worked as a lumberjack. Unfortunately, Brian's parents divorced during his childhood, due in part to his dad's alcoholism, Damn. but they still remained on good terms. In school, Brian was involved with sports at an early age, but when a friend showed him a wrestling magazine, that's when he found his true passion. Before he even graduated from high school, Brian knew he wanted to pursue wrestling as a career and was set on training at Dean Malenko School. Wow. Unfortunately, it was shut down by the time he was ready. Luckily, Brian found out that Shawn Michaels was opening a school in San Antonio, Texas, so he moved away from his home and began training under the instruction of the Heartbreak Kid. At the age of 18, Brian had his first match ever and soon landed a WWE development contract. That's when he started training with William mm. Regal, who Daniel Bryan credits for helping him shape his career. During this time, Danielson took on the moniker he'd been known by for years, the American Dragon. Mm. Things were going well for Brian, and he was going to be called up to the main roster. Unfortunately, before that happened, Daniel was suddenly let go in July of 2001. Undeterred, Daniel Bryan continued wrestling and began honing his craft in Japan. WB soon took another look at the American Dragon and decided the best way to see what he could do was by having him wrestle. While the attention was on Jamie Noble and his girlfriend Nydia, little did anyone know that they were witnessing wow. the WWE debut of a future world champion. Oh, wow, I didn't even know that. That's crazy. What? Yeah. Once the bell rang, Noble was able to take control of Daniel Bryan. The American Dragon soon fought out of it and began wearing down Noble. Both wow. returned to their feet, where the two began grappling. People don't even realize then that this is going to be one of the guys to have one of the best movements we've seen in a long time in wrestling, bro. People are not even good realizing that sitting down right now, this guy was going to be a future world champion, main event, WrestleMania 30, and have one of the best WrestleMania moments of all time. Playing, with no one neither knew. one able to get an advantage. Jamie Noble tried multiple times to pin Daniel Bryan, but that wasn't happening. Bryan soon started landing some offensive moves, like kicks, but Jamie Noble caught his opponent on the rope and started an assault of his own. Nydia even got a cheap shot in while the referee wasn't watching. Noble soon returned to using submission holds, but a sudden comeback from Daniel Bryan began a series of pin attempts, with neither wrestler getting the three count. A knee to the midsection, not the window. They have a solid and the wrestling American match. Dragon wasn't finished yet. Daniel Bryan fought back with uppercuts and multiple attacks at Jamie Noble's head. Noble disrupted Daniel's offense with a power slam, but it was only a minor inconvenience. Daniel Bryan did a backflip off the turnbuckles and connected with a German suplex. Wow, he's Just showing as Bryan out. Was starting to build some momentum. Noble caught him with a swinging neckbreaker and pinned Daniel to end the match. 
while you would expect it to be one-sided, this match was no, surprisingly this was competitive. Very was competitive. Paced, went back and forth, which is refreshing. It's also cool seeing Daniel Bryan perform moves that he'd use years later once he was back in WWE, but yep. we're getting a bit ahead of ourselves. Daniel Bryan would wrestle a few more matches for WWE, but was not offered a contract. Like before, Daniel did not become discouraged and continued wrestling on the independent scene, mm -hmm. most notably in Ring of Honor. Finally, WWE came knocking and decided to sign Daniel Bryan to a contract in August 2009. After spending a while in development, Daniel Bryan would finally make his official WWE debut in February 2010. He, along with seven other development wrestlers, yep, in, appeared on a brand in, new show called NXT. NXT. Yep. Each of the development wrestlers were mentored by a WWE wrestler and competed in weekly challenges to avoid getting eliminated and ultimately earning a spot on the WWE roster. Daniel Bryan was paired with The Miz and didn't do too good mm -hmm. as he lost his first five matches. This led to Daniel eventually being eliminated from the competition. However, this wasn't the last we would see of Bryan. The week after NXT finished up, John Cena and CM Punk were wrestling in the main event of Raw. All of a sudden, Wade Barrett, the wrestler who won NXT, appeared on the Raw stage. Then, the other NXT wrestlers... This was a cool moment. I'm not even gonna lie to you. I watched this live, and I thought this was one of the coolest things WWE had did in quite some time, like just the destruction of of everything. That I thought that was cool. Including Daniel Bryan, appeared in the crowd and surrounded the ring. They started attacking CM Punk, John Cena, and destroyed the entire ringside area. It was a great moment, but it accidentally went too far. Yeah. Daniel Bryan started choking the ring announcer with the announcer's own tie. This was seen as too violent, mm -hmm. and Bryan got fired because of it. Mm -hmm. This was only a minor setback, however. A little over two months after being fired, Daniel Bryan returned to WWE at the 2010 SummerSlam. He was brought back as a member of John Cena's team, who were fighting against Bryan's former NXT buddies, who had now started calling themselves the Nexus. Bryan looked impressive, eliminating two Nexus members, mm -hmm. and while Daniel did eventually get eliminated himself, his team still won. Soon after, Daniel Bryan began a feud with his former mentor, The Miz, who was also the United States champion. Bryan and Miz fought at Night of Champions, where Daniel Bryan beat the future A-lister and won his first championship mm -hmm. in WWE. Which he was a cool moment. That was a cool moment. I enjoyed him actually getting the United States championship belt. There. American Dragon held on to the title for nearly six months, defeating the likes of John Morrison, Ted DiBiase, and more. Finally, in April 2011, Daniel Bryan met his match when he lost the U.S. title oh. to Sheamus on Raw. This is not going to be... Uh... <laughs> It's not going to be the first time he loses a title to Sheamus. While that was unfortunate, Brian would get a fresh start when he was drafted to the SmackDown roster a few weeks later. His first feud on the Blue Show was with Cody Rhodes, after Cody put a paper bag over <laughs> Daniel's head. The two went back and forth, trading wins and losses, but the rivalry did end with Cody Rhodes defeating Daniel Bryan. That wasn't too much of a blow, as shortly after that, Daniel Bryan entered the World Heavyweight Championship Money in the Bank ladder match and, he and won. won. After the victory, Daniel Bryan said he would cash in the contract at next year's WrestleMania, WrestleMania 28. While he made a big claim, Daniel Bryan had a hard time backing it up in the ring. Victories became uncommon for the American Dragon, and he would more often than not lose his matches. This didn't stop him from engaging in a feud with the World Heavyweight Champion, Mark Henry, who wanted to prove that Daniel would never become a champion. The two faced off in a few matches, which Mark Henry always won, yeah. backing up Henry's claim. At the same time, Mark Henry also had a rivalry with The Big Show, which set up a match at TLC 2011. Big Show won, but was attacked by Mark Henry immediately after the match. Daniel Bryan decided to capitalize and cashed in mm -hmm. his Money in the Bank contract. He pinned Big Show and won the World Heavyweight Championship. The excitement of the victory caused Daniel Bryan to create the Yes Chant, which would become a trademark of his. You might have already guessed, but the odd part about the whole thing was that Bryan said he was going to cash in at WrestleMania 28. Well, before TLC, Bryan had tried to cash in a few times. He claimed he wanted to get revenge on Mark Henry, and he was worried that Henry's attacks would not allow him to compete at WrestleMania. Regardless, Daniel Bryan was now the world champion. Yep. This caused Daniel Bryan to change and become more egotistical. And, and he started to become a heel, which worked. It worked. He needed some type of character fresh up. And it worked. He was he was becoming a heel, but ultimately he was creating a movement in doing that as well. Here again. 
Additionally, prior to winning the title, Brian began a romance with AJ Lee, who started accompanying him to his matches. On the yep. first pay-per-view after TLC, the Royal Rumble, Daniel Bryan defended the world title against Big Show and Mark Henry in a steel cage. Despite the size disadvantage, the American Dragon won and held on to the championship. Brian had another successful title defense inside the Elimination Fucking Chamber, Santino. defeating five other wrestlers. Unfortunately, right after that, the uh -oh. 2012 Royal Rumble winner, Sheamus, attacked Daniel, sending the message that the Celtic Warrior would face Brian at WrestleMania. It's always Sheamus. <laughs> Sheamus has become, he definitely, early in Daniel Bryan's career, he was his kryptonite. Goddamn Sheamus. In the weeks leading up to the match, Daniel Bryan kept getting mad at AJ Lee, saying she was getting in his way. Despite that, AJ oh accompanied Bryan to his WrestleMania match. She even gave him a kiss right yep. before, which ended up being a mistake. Sheamus caught Daniel with a broken Boom. and won the World Heavyweight Championship. As you can imagine, Daniel Bryan was not too happy. He soon ended his relationship with AJ Lee and focused solely on his rematch with Sheamus. Even with AJ Lee absent, Daniel Bryan still lost. It wasn't all bad news for Bryan, however. He soon became the number one contender for the WWE Championship. He got his match at Over the Limit against the champion, CM Punk. The ending was controversial because while Daniel Bryan did get pinned, mm -hmm. CM Punk tapped out yep. immediately afterward. Not only that, but AJ Lee came back into the picture. Mm -hmm. I forgot all about this. Even though they actually started dating in real life after during, I think it was maybe during their little interaction or a little bit after, but they they definitely did start dating in real life. So I forgot all about this, man. This is bringing me back down memory lane. Now with an attraction for CM Punk and even Kane. Yeah. During this love square, Daniel Bryan got two more shots at the WWE Championship at No Way Out and Money in the Bank, both of which he lost. That didn't matter though, as shortly after that, Daniel Bryan rediscovered his love for AJ Lee oh and God. asked her to marry him. Oh my AJ God. Lee said yes. Oh the two had their wedding on the 1000th episode of Raw, uh, but AJ ended up leaving Bryan at the altar and instead decided to accept Vince McMahon's proposal to be the Raw general manager. This made Daniel Bryan irate and his yes chance became no chance. However, mm -hmm. life goes on, and at the 2012 SummerSlam, Brian was put in a match with Kane that Daniel won. Despite the victory, Brian <laughs> was still upset, so AJ Lee used her authority to force Daniel and Kane. Team Hell No wasn't supposed to be as over as it was, but it worked, bro. Oh my. Team Hell No was very over, very popular. Oh my. To attend geez. anger management classes. This led to them becoming a tag team, and they even won the tag team championship. Team hell no. Brian and Kane still need a name for their tag team, so a poll was held, and the fans voted to call them Team Hell No. With that established, Team Hell No had their first rivalry with Cody Rhodes and Damian Sandow. Daniel Bryan and Kane defended their title several times and managed to hold on to the gold. After that, Kane would be attacked by a group who recently debuted in the WWE Shield. called The Shield. Brian, of course, stood by Kane's side, as well as Ryback, someone else who the Shield had assaulted. The two sides fought at the 2012 TLC pay-per-view, where Daniel Bryan's team unfortunately Ooh. lost. After their feud with the Shield, Team Hell No went back to defend their tag team championship. They remained strong and even had a successful tail defense at WrestleMania mm -hmm. 29. Soon after, Daniel Bryan and Kane would butt heads with the Shield once again. This set up a match between Team Hell No and Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns yep. at Extreme Rules. This is so bad. This was when Raw was definitely, you could watch Raw, like, there was at least a few things that was very interesting with Raw. The tag team division was pretty decent. You had the Shield going on. You had Team Hell No. You had CM Punk. There was a lot of things, a lot of moving pieces back then on Raw that was a lot more enjoyable than what it is now, bro. Oh, man. This, whoo. And this is just really, this entire time, the Yes movement. It's just gradually getting, get, it's just growing organically. It was there that Kane and Bryan's flame would be extinguished as Reigns and Rollins won and took the tag team championship. The defeat caused Daniel Bryan to feel insecure and he wanted to prove that he wasn't the weak link of Team Hell No. While Kane tried to reassure his tag team partner, Daniel Bryan wasn't convinced and ended up teaming with Randy Orton for a while since Orton also hated the Shield. Unfortunately, the team didn't work out, and the Dragon and Viper lost the shield at payback. While all this was going on, Daniel Bryan had begun building an organic connection with the fans. I just said it, bro. This date, WWE management did not expect this to happen. 
the last time, and I, and I got to be honest, outside of the CM Punk situation, I think the last time we seen a movement this strong that transcended just wrestling and became mainstream was Stone Cold's what chance. Those got over. Stone Cold was already over, but then he got even more over with the what chance and the movement behind that. That people were saying it everywhere, outside of wrestling. Same thing with the Yes movement. That started getting mainstream buzz. Crowds were doing Yes chants. People still do the Yes chants, obviously in AEW and in WWE now. If they like something, they'll do the Yes chant. That would never die. And it happened organically, and I love to see. I'm, I'm just glad I was alive to see that happened fans and his popularity was growing perhaps because of this john cena chose brian to challenge him for the WWE championship mm -hmm. at SummerSlam. this was a huge opportunity for daniel bryan but vince mcmahon wasn't too happy he didn't believe daniel bryan fit the model of what a WWE champion should be however triple h WWE's chief operating officer disagreed and supported brian in the weeks before SummerSlam, daniel bryan would be put through various tests mm -hmm. which showed just how determined he was Finally, it came time for John Cena and Daniel Bryan. One of the best matches in SummerSlam history. One of the best build-ups to SummerSlam. The movement was great. The swerve was even greater. Oh my God, this match was so good. Brian to go one-on-one. -on -one. Triple H was the special guest referee, and Brian and Cena left it all in Dang, the ring. Fantastic Despite match. some doubts, Daniel Bryan got the biggest win of his career yep. so far by defeating John Cena and becoming WWE Champion. I would never. I, I got, I'm getting goosebumps now because I thought, holy shit, they did it. Holy shit, they did it. They gave you what the fans wanted, and um, this was such a good swerve, bro. Then, as Brian was celebrating, right here. Triple H attacked him. This allowed Randy Orton, the 2013 Money in the Bank winner, to cash in his contract and easily take yep. the WWE Championship from Daniel Bryan. And, as it turned oh out, my Triple God. H did not actually support Bryan. Even though the authority of WWE didn't believe in Daniel Bryan, the fans did. The fans, this oh Daniel my Bryan God, this is Randy so Orton good. At the next pay-per-view and regain the WWE Championship. Unfortunately, it still wasn't a happy ending. Yep. The next night, Brian had the WWE title stripped from him when the referee said he made a fast count during Daniel's match with Randy Orton. The third match at Battleground, neither Daniel Bryan nor Orton won due to the Big Show interfering and attacking both of them. To prevent that from happening, Daniel and Randy's fourth... This was a great match too. This was a really good match, bro. Hell in a Cell, Daniel Bryan, Randy Orton... Triple A, uh, Shawn Michaels as, a, as the referee. This was good. Match was inside Hell in a Cell with Shawn Michaels as the special guest referee. Based on the fact that the last special guest referee attacked Daniel Bryan and that Michaels was good friends with Triple H, can anyone be surprised that no. HBK super kicked Daniel? Regardless, this helped Randy Orton win and become the WWE Champion. It sucked, but at least Daniel Bryan got yep. payback on Shawn Michaels mm -hmm. the next night. While Daniel Bryan still had unfinished business with Orton and the Authority, he had to deal with the Wyatt family yep. after they attacked him. The rivalry continued up until TLC, where Daniel fought all three members in a handicap match. It was fantastic. Not this surprising, was great but too. Bryan lost. They had built the ultimate baby face. He was going against everybody and was still fighting. Man! Oh my god. It, this makes me want to go back and watch some of these matches. The next night, Daniel couldn't take the pain anymore he and joined. decided to join the Wyatts. This only lasted about two weeks, mm -hmm. as on the January 13th, 2014 episode of Raw, Daniel Bryan would disobey Bray Wyatt and attack Bray and the other family members. Bryan and Bray faced off at the Royal Rumble, where Daniel Bryan unfortunately lost. One of the best Royal Rumble matches. It, that match was actually one of the best matches that year. Fantastic match. And everyone was expecting, because it happened at the beginning of the Royal Rumble, well, Daniel Bryan will be in the Royal Rumble match, right? Right? Lost, but the defeat soon became irrelevant. The fans started demanding that Daniel Bryan be given a WWE Championship match and were upset when he wasn't part of the Royal Rumble match. Daniel Bryan would finally get another shot at the WWE title at the Elimination Chamber. Bryan outlasted everyone in the Chamber match mm -hmm. until it came down to him and the WWE World Heavyweight Champion, Randy Orton. Thanks to an attack by his former teammate, Kane, who is now working for the Authority, the Viper was able to retain the gold. 
Soon after, Daniel Bryan and a group of fans this occupied so Raw cool, and demanded that the American Dragon get another shot at the WWE Championship. Triple H made a deal. He and Daniel Bryan would face off at WrestleMania 30, and the winner would be inserted into the World Championship match later that night. At the event, Daniel Bryan did defeat Triple H. However, after the match, the Such game attacked a good, Bryan and injured such, him. This was this a good match, Daniel too. A this was a very good the match. Championship match. Despite the oh, odds man. being against him and even more obstacles being thrown in his way, crowd. Daniel Bryan somehow did it and reclaimed the... When I say I fucking lost my shit, I wish I was doing YouTube and stuff back then, y'all would have seen... I damn near cried because we, us fans, we finally got what we wanted. Like, legitimately, we got exactly what we wanted. I mean... Him beating Triple H, then him coming out there on stacked against him still, and him winning it at the grandest stage of them all. The crowd going crazy. Everyone chanting yes. Monday Night Raw after that. Everyone chanting yes. We got what we wanted. It's crazy to think that a lot of times you don't get what you want in WWE. You barely do sometimes. They, this was it. To this day, I don't think they've, like, storytelling-wise, I don't think they've topped it. In in the ultimate babyface, I don't think they've topped it since Daniel Bryan, in my opinion. WWE World Heavyweight Championship. This was, without a doubt, one of the most feel-good moments in WWE history. While he finally reclaimed the championship, the journey was far from over. Soon after, Stephanie McMahon enticed Kane to return to his masked self and challenged Daniel Bryan to a match at Extreme Rules. The former tag team champions had an intense fight mm -hmm. that went all over the yeah, arena. Yeah, it was cool but too. But Daniel Bryan still managed to come out on top. Bryan's title reign seemed to be going well, but then disaster would strike. Soon after Extreme Rules, Kane would attack Daniel Bryan, causing him to be stretchered out of the building. This was to write Bryan off TV. In real life, yeah. Daniel lost strength in his right arm and needed neck surgery. Due to and that's... Oh, that sucked so bad, bro. We got what we wanted only to for that to happen. I think the original plan was for Daniel Bryan to lose to Brock Lesnar at SummerSlam. That was the original plan, I believe. They were going to have him hold it to SummerSlam, and he was going to lose to Brock, which... I think people wouldn't have tripped because Brock just beat the Undertaker streak at the time and it's Brock freaking Lesnar. But I think they would have had a great match and later down the line, they did have a great match. This, the authorities stripped Daniel Bryan of the WWE World Heavyweight Championship, ending his reign at 64 days. Yeah. Bryan sadly had to spend months off TV as he recovered and regained his strength. Daniel would finally return in November 2014, appearing as the guest general manager for both Raw and SmackDown that week. Finally, though, in 2015, Daniel Bryan would make his in-ring return. He reignited his feud with Kane and the Authority and earned himself a spot in the 2015 Royal Rumble. Mm -hmm. Sadly, the former world champion only spent 10 minutes in the match before uh, being eliminated. I, I think me personally, and I think a lot of us, I think we would have loved for Daniel Bryan to have won it again. Want, like, well, not won it, but actually get actually win the Royal Rumble. He, he wasn't in it in the year previous. Even though he ended up main event in WrestleMania, I think it would have been a nice redemption story for him to actually win the Royal Rumble. So. Bryan would get one more shot when he defeated Seth Rollins, awarding him a match against the Rumble winner, Roman Reigns. Yeah. The two faced off. Even though we know why this was happening. They should have pulled an audible, but they were going strictly with Roman at the time. And they they literally used Daniel to try to get a Roman over. It didn't work. Off at fast lane. Whoever won got to challenge the world heavyweight champion, Brock Lesnar, at WrestleMania. And they had a great match. Despite his best efforts, Daniel Bryan crumbled to the Roman Empire. Since the world title was out of his reach, Daniel Bryan instead pursued the Intercontinental Championship. He, along with six other wrestlers, Fantastic the Intercontinental in ladder Championship match at ladder match. Finally, Daniel Bryan picked up his first major win since returning by capturing the IC belt. He would have a successful title defense the next night on Raw, and everything seemed to be going great. However, bad news was yeah. just around the corner. In mid-April, Daniel Bryan was taken off TV and soon relinquished the Intercontinental Championship. 
The reason for this was because of medical issues, but the exact reason was never given. Daniel Bryan would make a few appearances in 2015, but didn't wrestle. Sadly, in February 2016, One of the most emotional promos of all time. This is this promo here legitimately had me tearing up. Even talking about it, it just it brings it's it's emotional because he pretty much had to retire. He had to he had to stop doing what he loved. And we felt that pain. We felt that sorrow. Cause it's like, bro, this is the guy we've been wanting to see be at the top. And defy all the odds. And as soon as he gets to the top of the mountain, bad luck strikes. It's just it was so emotional and sad. Daniel officially announced his retirement due to years of concussions and yep. other injuries he sustained from wrestling. While he was no longer an in-ring competitor, Daniel Bryan was still an active part of WWE. In July 2016, Daniel Bryan was made the general manager of SmackDown. For the next roughly two years, Bryan would act as an authority figure and even had some small rivalries, mm -hmm. one of which involved the SmackDown commissioner Shane McMahon and Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. Shane and Owens had been butting heads when Owens insulted Shane's kids and literally head-butted Shane's father, mm -hmm. Vince McMahon. Sami Zayn had gotten involved as well by aiding Kevin Owens during the feud. <laughs> Shane McMahon had become furious and wanted to fire both Sami and Kevin, but Daniel Bryan refused, feeling that Shane was acting on emotion. Daniel Bryan continued to favor Owens and Zayn until they attacked Shane McMahon on SmackDown in March of 2018. Daniel Bryan fired the two because of that, which caused Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn to attack him. Unfortunately for Kevin and Sami, Daniel Bryan had just been cleared to wrestle again. Mm, so yep. Daniel was that was a cool moment to see him come back. I ain't gonna lie to you. decided to challenge KO and Zayn to a tag team match at WrestleMania 34 between him and Shane. If Kevin and Sami could win, they would get their jobs back. After almost two years since his last match, Daniel Bryan returned, put on a phenomenal match, and won. Mm -hmm. Now that he was back in the ring, Daniel Bryan resigned as SmackDown General Manager and became a full-time wrestler again. Soon after, Bryan entered the Greatest Royal Rumble. He lasted an impressive 76 minutes before being eliminated by Big Cass. This started a feud which saw Daniel and Cass face off at Backlash and Money in the Bank, where Bryan won both times. Mm -hmm. Next, Daniel Bryan reformed <laughs> when Kane I forgot came to all his about aid that. when Daniel was attacked by the SmackDown Tag Team Champions, the Bludgeon Brothers. I forgot Kane and Bryan got a shot at the no, Brothers at Extreme Rules, again. but one more tail ring for Team Hell No was not meant to be. Soon after, Daniel Bryan turned his attention to his <laughs> rival. Uh, this, was, this was something I was waiting for, waiting to happen. Miz, Daniel Bryan, the heated real-life rivalry. This was the feud I was waiting for. I was like, if you're going to have Daniel Bryan back, you got to have this feud with him. Oh, this was good. Mentor, The Miz. They fought each other at SummerSlam, but thanks to The Miz using a pair of brass knucks, Bryan lost the match. Miz wouldn't stop mocking Daniel, which ultimately got Bryan's wife, Brie Bella, to return and set up a mixed tag team match at Hell in a Cell, with The Miz teaming with his wife, Maurice. Unfortunately, Daniel Bryan would lose yet again when Brie was pinned by Maurice. Finally though, the American Dragon got his revenge when he beat The Miz to earn a WWE Championship match. Bryan's first title match against the champion, AJ Styles, didn't work out, but mm -hmm. two weeks later, the GOAT and the Phenomenal One went at it again. During the rematch, Daniel Bryan low blowed AJ. And this was great. He went heel. He went heel, and people were just like, whoa, what is going yeah, on? Which got Bryan the win and the WWE Championship. Yep. Daniel also attacked Styles after the match, making him a villain once again. Soon after, Daniel Bryan explained that the fans were not with him during his recovery, and that's why he did what he did. Daniel Bryan would face AJ Styles two more times at TLC and the Royal Rumble. They had some Daniel great came out on top in both encounters, but at the Rumble, Bryan's victory was thanks to Eric Rowan, who would then align himself with the WWE Champion. After his feud with Styles, Daniel Bryan unveiled a custom <laughs> WWE Championship yep. belt that was environmentally friendly. Yep. <laughs> this is the start of Daniel Bryan's eco-friendly character, and he started calling himself the Planet's champion. <laughs> Daniel's next tell events would happen at Elimination Chamber. At the very that end, it came down to God off. <laughs> Even though the fans were on Kofi's side, Daniel denied Kingston the victory and retained. And Kofi Kingston became what Daniel Bryan was a few years prior. He became the people, he became the person people wanted to get behind. I love how it comes full circle like that. 
the Kofi Mania started right there. And it wasn't even supposed to happen. It was supposed to be in Mustafa Ali's position. And that's crazy because the similarities. Daniel Bryan wasn't supposed to be the main event of WrestleMania 30. If it wasn't for CM Punk leaving, none of that happens. If CM Punk doesn't leave, then we don't get that match. We don't get the, the yes movement at WrestleMania 30 in the way it ended. So it's crazy how things happen that way, man. The WWE Championship. However, the fan support for Kofi Kingston kept getting louder and yep. louder. Kind of like what Daniel Bryan experienced mm -hmm. five years earlier. Despite all kinds of hurdles and obstacles, Kofi Kingston was able to get a one-on-one -on -one match with Daniel Bryan at WrestleMania 35. No matter what Daniel threw at Kingston, there was no stopping Kofi Mania. And I love what Kofi said in the lead up to that match. He said, you know how this story ends, Bryan. You was there. You know how this story ends because you've been a part of it. You know what's going to happen. I love Mania, it. And Daniel Bryan lost the match and the WWE title. After WrestleMania, Bryan and Eric Rowan would defeat the Usos and become the SmackDown Tag Team Champions. They had a modest title reign of 68 days before, ironically, mm -hmm. losing the belts to Kofi Kingston's teammates, Xavier Woods and Big E. At the same time, Rowan Reigns was being targeted by someone. Roman suspected <laughs> Eric Rowan of being the person behind the that attacks. Looked so Daniel cringe. Bryan didn't believe it, but Rowan eventually admitted to being responsible. This ended their partnership, and while Rowan would team up with Luke Harper, Rest Daniel Bryan peace. formed a shrill line with Roman Reigns. The two sides fought it out at Hell in a Cell, with Daniel and Roman getting the better of Rowan and Harper. Afterward, Daniel Bryan would be attacked by an old rival, mm -hmm. The Fiend, Bray Wyatt, who was also the Universal Champion. The two went at it for the first time in over four years at the 2019 Survivor Series. Unfortunately, like last time, The yeah. Fiend was victorious. Daniel Bryan wasn't ready to quit yet, and despite The Fiend continuing to attack him and rip out his hair, Brian was undaunted. The American Dragon won a number one contenders match, earning himself another shot at the Masked Monster. They had their rematch at the 2020 Royal. Bro, they had some good matches. They had some, they had some good goddamn matches, bro. Rumble, and even though the Yes Movement was back in full force, yep. Daniel Bryan could not beat the Fiend. Post Royal Rumble, Daniel Bryan had a short rivalry with Drew Gulak, which eventually evolved into a partnership. At the same time, Daniel Bryan also earned a shot at the Intercontinental Champion, Sami Zayn. Bryan got his match at WrestleMania 36, but was unsuccessful. Luckily for Bryan, the title would be vacated soon after, giving him another opportunity. He entered a tournament to crown a new IC Champion and made it to the final round. There, he found himself in a match with AJ Styles. Unfortunately, Daniel Bryan could not get the win and was denied the Intercontinental Championship again. Following this, Brian would disappear from WWE for a few months, but returned in October of 2020. He stayed active, but Daniel Bryan's focus was on the Royal Rumble. Mm. Entry at number 17, Brian put in a good effort, but was unfortunately yep. eliminated. While it was a setback, Daniel Bryan turned his attention. I've always wanted if Daniel Bryan to at least get one uh, Royal Rumble win. To the Elimination Chamber. Thanks in part to his past success in the match, Bryan won, which earned him a shot at the Universal mm -hmm. Champion, Roman Reigns. Unfortunately, and this was so cold blooded. This was when Roman was in his mode, his prime mode, knocking through everybody. This is so cold, but I'm thinking they're gonna have the match at the end of the night. No, they lifted up the sale. Now we're about to have the match. Now I was like, wait a minute, this man had a grueling match. Hold on, what? He got his tail match immediately, immediately, after the chamber, bro. So it wasn't too surprising that he lost. Brian pointed out how unfair this was, so he was added to the Universal Championship match at WrestleMania 37. Once again, Brian was able to get the W Fantastic and Roman match. remained on top. However, Roman Reigns would give Daniel Bryan one more shot at his title, with the stipulation that if Bryan lost, he'd be banished from SmackDown. And this was a gr ooh, great tele This television match was a pay-per-view level quality match. It resulted, obviously, in Daniel Bryan because he didn't resign his contract. Resulted in him, you know, being ridden off of WWE programming for the foreseeable future. But it don't matter. This match in itself was fantastic. Loved it. It was a pay-per-view level quality match on SmackDown. Daniel Bryan accepted, and with everything on the line, Bryan prepared to go one-on-one -on -one with the head of the table. As soon as the bell rang, Brian charged at Reigns and connected with a drop kick. 
He followed up with a series of kicks. And actually, I think Daniel Bryan may be the... Yeah, Daniel Bryan was one of the only people to actually make him make him tap out. He was, he was one of the only people to actually make him tap out. Uh, I want to say uh, he had a match. Yeah, he had a match with him. Uh, I forgot what pay-per-view, but Edge was the, I, I believe Edge was the guest enforcer or whatever. And they, he had tapped him out, but they didn't call the match. But he had tapped him out. So it was cool to see, like, he's the one person that made him tap out. Before Roman shut it, it didn't all count, down though. with a loud uppercut, Daniel Bryan was far from over and almost locked in the yes lock. Roman Reigns escaped to the outside, but Bryan kept his assault going by landing a kick this and a run. Such knee. a good match. After a commercial break, Bryan was still on the attack, drilling Reigns with kicks on the ground and in the corner. However, one brutal clothesline was enough Ooh. to derail Daniel Bryan's entire offense. Roman slowed the pace down mm -hmm. by hitting a headbutt, a snap suplex, and applying a headlock. Brian made a brief comeback when he flipped off the turnbuckles, but the tribal chief knocked him back down with a single elbow. Since it worked for Roman Reigns, Brian tried using some uppercuts, followed by a drop toe hold into a turnbuckle. The American Dragon went high risk, but it didn't pay off, and Daniel Bryan ate a powerbomb. After another commercial break, Reigns threw Bryan's body into the ringside barricade. The Universal Champion quickly got the fight back into the ring and continued assaulting Daniel he was Bryan. Him the beats. Reigns attempted his own high risk move, but Daniel used the opportunity to stun Roman Reigns and hit a huge back suplex off the top rope. Bryan then began connecting with the yes kicks, only for Reigns to counter and hit the Samoan drop. The head of the table prepared to hit the Superman punch, but Daniel Bryan struck first with a kick. Daniel sent his opponent Bro, this match is so good. and went for a suicide dive. They usually have some great matches together. And hit a belly to belly suplex. Roman was gonna hit a spear, but a sidestep from Brian caused the Universal Whoop! Champion this to This was bust so good. Oh. Once SmackDown returned from a third commercial break, Daniel Bryan hit a diving headbutt in the ring. The American Dragon was psyched up, but got taken down by a Superman punch from out of nowhere. Daniel still had some counters up his sleeve and nailed Reigns with a running knee. The victory was denied, though, when Roman Reigns caused a rope break. You can't tell me this wasn't a, a pay-per-view quality match. Oh, man. Daniel Bryan then went for the yes lock, but had to release it when Roman got Daniel on his shoulders. Like a truck, Daniel Bryan was mowed down Woo! with a spear. Bryan kept the match alive, but the fight was taking its toll on him. The champion locked in the guillotine, but Daniel Bryan fought out and applied the yes lock. The American Dragon fought to keep the hole locked in, but Roman Reigns' strength yeah. was too much. The Tribal Chief powerbombed the challenger and punished Daniel with repeated fists. Yep. Bryan was hit with a second powerbomb and then forced into the guillotine again. There was no way Where to he escape passed out. Daniel Bryan passed out. The match was over, Roman Reigns was still the champion, and Daniel Bryan's WWE career was finished. This was an excellent match. Excellent match. I love match. the underdog story it told with Roman Reigns constantly knocking Daniel Bryan down and making it difficult for Bryan to build momentum. I love the near falls too, mm -hmm. but it was a little lame. There were a few times where Daniel or Roman would get hit by a big move or fight out of a painful submission hold, and then a few seconds later, they're back up and land their own big move or submission hold. Regardless, it was still a very good match and helped make Roman Reigns look dominant. In real life, Daniel Bryan's WWE contract was about to expire. WWE still wanted to keep him on the roster, which is why the stipulation was that Daniel Bryan would be banished from SmackDown mm -hmm. and not WWE. Bryan, though, chose not to stay with the company. In September 2021, Bryan made his AEW debut and is still there currently. Will he ever return to WWE? I can't say yes or no to that, but I can say that you can watch every Belt to Belt video by... Yeah, I can see maybe, maybe on... I don't know. I, I I don't know. It depends on. I don't know. There's a possibility he could go back. I I can see him maybe ending his career if he really really wanted to, ending his career in WWE. Because here's the thing about Daniel Bryan's last run. You know he kind of had can creative control for the most part over the storylines and what he wanted to do. Like he always said he wanted to wrestle Brock Lesnar. They, that match they had, I believe it was at Survivor Series. I, I believe it was champion versus champion. That match was so good. Daniel Bryan was a heel, but in that match, he was a face. And it was very good. I enjoyed that match. It was fun. And he got to face people, put over people he needed to put over. Um, I can see him having 
definitely a lot of more creative control because he's a big name. If Daniel Bryan came back to WWE, it would definitely help him out for sure if he was to end off his career there. So I can see him later down the line after he becomes an AEW world champion at least once or whatnot, maybe twice depending on how it goes. I can see him going back to WWE to probably put over some guys, maybe have one more run and then hang it up. I can see that happening, possibly. But this, I love this video. This video is great. It brought me down memory lane. I, I just, it just made me feel so great to have been a part of this and to watch this live when it happened. It, this was, this was fantastic. Daniel Bryan, he is without a doubt one of the best wrestlers in the world, has one of the best movements, and dude is fantastic in the ring. Love the guy, so. Comment down below, let me know what's your favorite, and I, I know this is gonna be tough, what's your favorite Daniel Bryan match? Doesn't matter from when in WWE, what's your favorite Daniel Bryan match? Because in AEW, he's had some fucking bangers. So in just strictly WWE, what's your favorite Daniel Bryan match? But I appreciate all the love and support on the channel. Road to 90K. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all next one. Peace.